Interest in collegiate athletics have never been greater, but what goes into the foundation of building a championship program? At Colorado State University Pueblo, when fundraising facilities and talent come together, what you have is one of the best Division II programs in the country. Let's peel back the curtains. Let's go behind the scenes. Welcome to Walk with the Wolves, all access with CSU Pueblo Athletics. Football, family, and food. For John Riston, the three represent a commitment to his staff. Coaching can serve a larger purpose. Well, we've touched on the family atmosphere that's been created at CSU Pueblo, but when you have an opportunity like Tuesday night, when you get to have your coaches in, in a personal setting, in your home, what does it add to the program? What does it add to the, the community atmosphere that you've built here? Well, our, our number one goal in our program is to have attitude and chemistry. And uh, if we don't have it as a staff, we don't have it as an interaction between our families and my family and our community families. And, and I, don't, I don't think you really are adding to that chemistry part of it. And so uh, I have a great wife that has uh, been able to invite these poor souls that don't have a place to go eat after working all day. And, you know, we're usually in the office early in the morning and um, we start feeding about 8.30 at night on Tuesday nights. So... It, it adds to our chemistry, and that's one of our number, number one goals. It's hard not to notice the, the quotes around your program, uh, asking for excellence, requiring excellence, an inspiring place to be. What inspires you? What, what do, do you drive a lot of your inspiration from? <laughs> that's a good question. I, I, I don't want to fail this community. I don't want to fail uh, CSU Pueblo. I don't want to fail their our kids that are in this program and I ask them to do certain things so I just want to make sure I give it my all. If I give it my all and put my head down and if it's good enough it's good enough. If it's not, it's not. And so I just want to go to bed every night knowing I've given it my all and help these kids so be successful. A lot of times that creates pressure. Now we've seen how that doesn't really exist here because guys understand they can be themselves. The, the music that is playing, the individualism that comes with being a part of a team. How have you tried to, to make sure that, that the atmosphere isn't overwhelming where guys feel like if I do not succeed, I am failing the community, so success has to be a requirement? I, I think the only way, there's a lot of ways to measure success. It's not done on ones and losses, and it's not done on every Saturday afternoon. I believe success is being able to take a kid where he can't take himself. I believe it's being able to help uh, young coaches become better coaches. I, I believe in myself. I, I, I need to be able to uh, be humble and be able to ask people, um, what do you think? What, what, what do I need to do better? And I think uh, if you do all those things, that adds to all that success. And so um, I, I really think part of my job is we don't get finished products. And uh, if they can graduate here and earn their degree, I mean, isn't that success? No matter how many games you win or lose. And then I'm trying to get these kids to buy in and everybody understand, hey, put your head down, go to work, and see what happens. If you don't do that, that's a failure. So if I can build uh, and teach these guys that go to work every day as hard as you can and be excited about what you're doing. You got a chance to be successful. What coach has the most aggressive eating tactics that we need to be aware of? Well, there, there, there's a lot of different combination. Uh, it, coach Hughes, is he's from Nashville, so you got to watch out with, with, with him. He kills you with that southern gentleman style. And then, then there's Craig Ward, who's um, a, a rancher. And so those ranchers are pretty aggressive and pretty bold on that. And then there's JT Haddon, who's one of my first players that we ever recruited that is a, a silent assassin. You know, he just doesn't, uh, he don't say more than two words and he never did in his playing career, but he can put some food away now. And uh, then there's Jake Novotny and he, he talks while he eats. So he just keeps talking. And so we, 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 got, we, got, we got a lot of issues over here. And, you know, Steve Sewell, he'd come over, but um, we started, a, a, I put him in charge of our study table, and, and we have uh, teachers from the campus come over on Tuesday night. And it, it'd be easy for him to leave to come eat, 
But that's the type of guy he is that he won't leave what he's responsibility and that's what I love about him. So uh, Steve is, is one of the nicest guys and he always brings something. These other yahoos never bring anything. So um, it, it's one of those deals. You, you gotta have all the right ingredients in both cases. You gotta have the right ingredients to make the right sausage or you gotta right brisket or you gotta get the right rub. And, as a team, you got to have the right ingredients, and I'm very lucky to have all the right ingredients on my team. Like I don't know about my cooking. But well, the meat doesn't talk back, which is a well, nice benefit as well. Well, that's, <laughs> but it, you also don't get judged on Saturday afternoons, <laughs> and so I've been very lucky to have the great ingredients with her. I was fortunate to be a Division One coach for a long time, and um, it put it, we put in the hours that we need to. And I think right now in Division, the way we operate, we. We get our work done, yeah. we, and we, we're not going to skimp on anything. But also, uh, if you're done, it's okay to go home. It's okay to be a part of doing something different. And so um, that's kind of what we do here on Tuesday nights here at uh, Sushi Plolo. And, uh, i got to feed a bunch of guys, my staff, that doesn't have anybody to go home to cook for them. So my wife will shell, and uh, we try to do something each Tuesday. And this is an opportunity for us to have a little life in balance. Well, let's break down the menu because we do have plenty of hungry coaches and the selection is across the board, Coach. Well, uh, tonight uh, um, I'm doing a little uh, chicken. I'm smoking teriyaki chicken. I uh, had a marinade made and, and it's marinated for 24 hours. Sausage and chicken. When an ocean separates you from home, what's the best way for a college athlete to immerse themselves in their new home? For Tamra Nee, the Hawaiian has spent four years as an aggressive defender for the Thunder Wolf soccer team. In addition to her athletic and academic responsibilities, Nee works three jobs. She spent her entire life as a devout fan of ice cream, which is why Cold Stone was a natural fit. Rec League refing for nighttime soccer matches is just another way to be around the game she loves. This is Tam Renee, island born, Pueblo bred. Uh, my name is Tam Renee. I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a senior here studying uh, sociology with an emphasis in criminology. I had a coach who was my teacher, who was my friend at the same time. And she's like, you know what, you're never gonna get to play again. So might as well just try it out. See, do it. And if you don't like it, well, at least you got to do it. And instead of going off and saying, well, I could have, I wish I could have. And coming out here is I needed to get away from home, try something new, learn something, meet new people. Um, the difference here, I think the campus is totally different from Pueblo itself. And the campus life is what I really love because you have people from everywhere. And you meet, it's not a huge campus, nor is it too small. So you are always constantly meeting someone new while knowing everyone on campus at the same time. So you're walking, you're saying, hey, what's up? And then they're like, oh, hey, this is my friend. And I think that's, that's the best part about being here in Pueblo. I love taking my time. I'm a very just laid back. I like looking at the field, knowing what's going on. I like controlling it and just being calm, I like being composed with the ball, I like holding and distributing the ball. I think the most creative is when I'm under pressure that quick pressure and that's where everything just comes out when I'm not even thinking. Like I can just pull it out and do it and then look up and if they come back I could do it again. Just it's right when they're on me and the physicality of it that's my one of my favorite parts too. I'm not out to hurt people but if they're gonna come after me I'm ready to hit back. Tamara was enjoying a smooth senior season until a concussion changed everything. The heightened attention surrounding head injuries forced me to endure a series of thorough tests. Our number one concern as an athlete trainer is making sure our athletes are being taken care of the best we can. And uh, I think the added knowledge and emphasis put on it is a good thing because we are doing what's best for the athlete. If an athlete suffers a concussion, or what we think as an athlete trainer is a showing signs of a concussion, we re remove them from activity. That's an NCAA um, rule guideline. And so that's being uh, played out all over the country. It's not cut and dry like an ankle sprain. You can go tell are they running properly and so forth. So um, a headache, number one symptom. It's easy for someone to say, oh, I don't have a headache. 
you can't measure that. So you think twice when you have someone that's presenting and am I doing the right, you know, following the steps. And that's where a protocol is important, um, that it's already planned out ahead of time what you would do. It's not like a new experience every time it occurs. The plan is when they return to activity that none of those symptoms reappear. It's extremely frustrating because I feel fine, I can run, I don't have anything wrong. It doesn't feel like I have anything wrong. The hardest part is just not being out there with the team, touching the ball and being able to be physical with each other. That's the hardest part is not being able to contribute to the growth of the team and the growth of our play. That's the hardest and this is my last year so I really have not too much left and I've been waiting we have a new coach and this is the best season yet and I'm just not out there I want to be out there it's kind of a downer going through the day knowing that I'm not going to be able to do everything that the team gets to do I know I'm excited to be out here on the field because I love being here it's the sport that I grew up playing and it's just hard to know that I'm not going to be able to do what everybody gets to do but I can be out here and support and help teach them. This is my fifth year as the men's golf coach and understanding what it takes to be successful in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference was, is very important. It's a certain type of player um, that can play in all conditions. Um, this golf tournament here we've had wind, rain, snow, a um, little bit of everything. So understanding what type of player you need um, is huge in recruiting and just pushing them. This is a great golf town. Um, we have great golf courses here. For the most part, it's sunny all year round. We can play golf a lot, uh, but it's 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 not that challenging when you have great facilities. The dorms are right next right next to the golf course here. It's pretty easy to sell to freshmen, and um, we've got a lot of support from from Pueblo. The men's program has been very inconsistent. Um, they've been extremely good at times, and we've been very bad at times. So. The goal for the spring is going to be to become more consistent, and that's going to put us in postseason play. Okay. The women's the women's golf team played uh, four golf tournaments this fall. They won three of them, um, two conference events, and one head-to-head -head regional event in uh, Amarillo, Texas. They are setting themselves up to get into Super Regionals um, next spring, which is something they haven't done for a few years as a team. Um, and they're only going to get better. Um, and we have four girls on the team right now that have each won a college golf tournament in their career. So that's pretty impressive. We we all live and die at CSU Pueblo. We're there we're there all the time. And but we chose that. And it's there could be worse things you could do. You know, we get paid to watch sports and and hang out with really interesting, awesome student athletes. And um, I have no complaints. It's hard to imagine, but Darius Allen's career with the game of football was questionable at best. Freshman year of high school, season-ending injury, let's call it a career. But a cousin, an aunt, and an uncle made sure that Darius would not miss his opportunity. A trip from Kentucky to Pueblo landed him at this university where NFL scouts now sit in the stands to watch Allen every Saturday. This is Darius Allen, one of the reasons why a top five football team exists year in and year out at CSU Pueblo. My freshman year of high school in Kentucky, I went to Bryant Station uh, High School and I ended up getting injured, uh, messed up my ankle, and like I just quit football altogether. So after that, I was just like, uh, forget football, whatever, whatever, and uh, you know, just started hanging out, you know, <laughs> you know, making bad grades, whatever. And then I came here, uh, my aunt and uncle uh, asked me to come here. They said, uh, you know, I can, I can get a better opportunity here. So I mean, it was an opportunity I felt like I could take advantage of, you know, especially with playing football again. Allen's path to Pueblo prosperity started at East High School, just a half mile away from CSU Pueblo. David Ramirez coached Darius in high school and in college. He's back at East where the memories of Darius Allen remain vivid. And so for us, focusing on the things that don't require talent was a huge part of our foundation and Darius did a great job of buying into that. His senior year, there was a, our last game of the regular season. We had a chance to go, go to the playoffs, and we didn't know whether or not we were going to get in or not, but we got into an overtime game. And in high school, it's four downs from the 10-yard line. In the very first play of overtime, Darius, we hand off to him. He runs it right in. Game over right there. You know, And I think for me, that's one of the lasting images of him, and, and I actually have that picture in my office still. I went to Pueblo East. It was like so close. It was like it was almost impossible to not be noticed 
by by CSU Pueblo if you if you're a decent player. He was like a sponge. He was just soaking it all in. He was enjoying being a part of the team, and uh, you know he definitely knew how to push our buttons from time to time as well. But uh, you know he did a great job. He wanted to learn. He wanted to be great at the game, and uh, he wanted to get to college. He had aspirations to play college football, so we we're going to help give him the tools to help help him make that a reality. And when I came here at Pueblo East, it was just like a. A ego check, you know, it was like, all right, you're not the best, you know, you're not who you think, who you want to be, you know, so, I mean, the same thing when you come to see issue Pueblo, you got to, you got to check your ego at the door, you know, you got to, you're not the best, you know, just come in and, and, and go to work, and, and that's what uh, the two really, I mean, it started at East, and it, it really, really, really transformed when I got here, because that's, that's what the coaches preach every day here, so, I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't knock that, so. My first year was Paul Creighton, um, my defensive line coach. His first year was my first year. They recruited me. So uh, he came here, and then he started recruiting me at Pueblo East. And that's how I ended up coming here. Like, I, I was following Paul Creighton, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a perfect, perfect situation for me. So. The two major surgeries and still coming back bigger, faster, stronger. What is it about him that, combined with the uh, culture at Pueblo East, has allowed him to take off? It's been an uphill battle for him. and and he's one of the more resilient people you'll ever come across. So for him, a setback isn't something negative. It's, it's the way he finds a new reason to work even harder to achieve the goals he wants to achieve. Am I gonna be fully able to run fast like I usually do? Am I, able gonna, am I gonna have the speed I usually had? Am I gonna have the explosiveness I have? Another season of college basketball is upon us. 23rd season as a head coach for Kip Drown, ninth with CSU Pueblo. What has longevity taught you about college basketball? Well, I think number one, patience. You know, uh, you don't develop people and players overnight, and it's just a long process, and you can't give up on teams, you can't give up on players. And, um, you know, it's just uh, it, it's a grind. Uh, you hear Major League Baseball players talk about 162 games grinding out. Well, you know, in a lot of ways, basketball is the longest season in college of any sport, and, and, and you have to be relentless. You just have to keep pounding away day after day after day to get better, and I think the teams that, that are able to do that, particularly through January and February, are the teams then that end up playing their best basketball in March. And so, um, you know, I, I think the longer, the longer I do this, the more I understand that it just doesn't happen quickly. It's just, it's just a process you've got to work through. When you look at where this program was nine years ago, the facilities, everything connected with Colorado State University Pueblo when you first arrived and what you have built and established with this program, how, how do you think it's all come together? Well, you know, we've got great administrative support. We have from the very get-go. Coach Fold is our athletic director, has been here the whole nine years or nine years that I've been here. He hired me, and, and I think that that's not a coincidence that, you know, anytime you get continuity, within an athletic program, I think it's a real positive thing. Uh, and you're right, the facilities coming in, you know, uh, about six, seven years ago now, made a tremendous impact upon, I think, recruiting and, and just opening up doors, particularly up in the Denver area to kids and making us a more viable candidate. You like that. I mean, you, you want to be somebody that other programs are looking at and saying, hey, these guys have been good, you know, and, and we want to continue to, to try to do that. A lot of people can, can knock on greatness's door, but to actually get through that sucker yeah. and to go get it, that's the challenge. <laughs> Of sports. It's tough. It really is. You know, and you know, like we tell our kids this. I didn't make this up. It's a quote I read somewhere. But there are so few people that are great because it's too easy to be good. And you know, it's just so easy to be good and, and just kind of coast along and, and to challenge people. We've gone the last two or three years with our recruiting classes. Is don't come here unless you want to be part of something great. You know, don't come here just to be good. Be want to be part of something great. And I think this team has some question marks going in in terms of maybe a depth, but I think. We've got the pieces that maybe people haven't heard about. If we can stay fairly healthy, we've got a chance to be very good, I think. And I, I really like this group of people. We're very hungry. Coach, have a great 2014 season. Uh, we're excited, and we'll see what happens. But I guarantee you this group is, is going to lay it on the line. I, this group is really dedicated and hungry, so I'm, I'm excited for them. Hey, stick around with us. This is Walking with the Wolves All Access, Colorado State University Pueblo Athletics. Why is this year the season where you make the leap from being a really good program to one of the contenders in the conference? Well, let's, let's be honest, that's to be seen. <laughs> but let's just say that I, I like my kids, they're a good group of kids. It's uh, going to be exciting to watch them play, but 
you know, last year we finished fourth in the conference and, and that was a good finish for us, but we're going to have to work really, really hard to get back to that position with the, the teams reloading like they did. It's going to be a very, very, very tough conference up, up top. So when we look at this squad, what will the reputation of this team be this year? What will this 2014 squad be known for? Well, I think we're going to make a lot of shots. I think we're going to make a lot of threes. I think we've got great depth. Uh, I think that's different from what we've been in the past. In the past, when we subbed, it wasn't always uh, with a lot of enthusiasm or confidence. It was reluctance. But this year, we go, we go eight or nine or ten deep, and so that's going to be different. I think we got some of the best shooting players we've ever had since I've been coaching in college. I think we're going to make a bunch of threes, and uh, I think we're going to be fun to watch. As you get ready to uh, really embark on this upcoming season, you're always about adding, adding to the dynamic, adding to the squad. What do you feel like you've been able to add to make this team even bigger and better? Well, first thing, let's let's give credit where credit's due. Tommy Johnson, my assistant, who I believe is the, the finest recruiter in the nation. I would say that we brought in the right pieces of the puzzle. I think this year we're going to be a little bit more aggressive defensively. But I, I think we live and die with the idea that we play with, uh, we're cerebral, yeah. intelligent. Yeah. We're all about intelligent play. And so if our kids can be cerebral on the floor, then it's going to elevate us to a place or to, to give us a chance to be competitive with those very best teams, the Adams States, the Metros, Fort Lewis. Mines brings back, uh, you know, School of Mines brings back probably the player of the year in the conference, Brett Green. They bring back uh, just a great team with great coaching. So it's a... It's a tough road ahead, but we're excited about the opportunity. This is uh, what you've been working for every year to get started and to start anew. Uh, we can't live off what happened last year. Everything we do is all about this year. I'm excited. The pieces of the puzzle are better. They're bigger pieces. They're, they're better pieces. So the puzzle might be a little bit more fun to look at at the end, but talk is cheap. I always told the kids I'd rather say less and do more, and that's what we're getting ready to do out here. Man knows how to have fun. Ralph, have a great season. Thank you so much. And this is Walk with the Wolves All Access with CSU Pueblo Athletics.